Greetings guys, this is Duke Violation, and uh, we're wandering through the coast of Novia right now. Uh, we're up by Norgard, and we are going to be uh, going toward Verdantis. So the goal here is to show off some of their Verdantis foothills and Verdantis mines. So these are some of the different areas here that you can see. Uh, there's Veritas up there. Um, there are runic uh, labels over the different scenes, and a lot of people struggle with this. Uh, if you don't know how to read runic, you can type slash sodawiki space runic. It'll pop open a page that tells you how to read runic. Um, I'll type it up so you see how that works. So, um, when you, SodaWiki slash Runic tells you how to read it, and when you get over the uh, entry of the zone, you'll be able to see the exact cipher for the top and the bottom. So the Runic text, if you, if you try to cipher it right there, you'd be able to see uh, each letter and kind of start to figure it out on your own. So I really like this whole area over here, and uh, I think it's heavily underplayed, but this is the Blood River area. Um, I think a lot of people stay mostly around Brittany, um, and they end up losing out because of it. Um, if you run up and down here, there's a couple of forests over here that give amazing uh, drops for wood. And uh, there are a couple of player-owned towns and player-run towns over here that are, are pretty sweet as well. So, um, anyway, I'm kind of uh, exploring the map right now. They've changed some of the collision spots on the map, and I haven't been able to do exactly what I'm doing right now before. Um, there are a few spots that I just used to not be able to get to that I'm kind of playing around with, um, seeing where it is that I can go different places and uh, then I'm going to be running through the Verdantis uh, mines. Superstition Canyons by the way um, that that came up there uh, Superstition Canyon is a beast for making some uh, experience in gold but they have upgraded all the control points and fights to where they're a lot harder than they used to be So the good mines with resources are actually behind foothills. So um, all the scenes that, uh, as you can see up here, um, all the scenes that have a foothills entry to them uh, will have a mines inside of them. So we're going to go ahead and go into the Verdantis foothills now, and uh, I'll get you into the mines here within probably the next five minutes. Um, so this, this area here... 
I'm going to kind of go off in one direction and show a little bit of the scene, and then I'll cut back and, and show where the mine's entry is. So kind of pay attention to that. So this area here is really cool. Um, I get a kick off of the uh, design here. It's different than almost anything that I've seen somewhere else. Um, it, it really looks like it's a full quarry. I don't know if anybody's ever gone to a quarry in real life, but uh, there are a bunch of these in Nevada. Um, before living in Ohio, uh, I lived in Nevada, and there are a ton of quarries out there. And uh, this is exactly how they appear. They get mined out in these uh, cuts that you, you basically make paths to get up and down and to carry your goods from the bottom back up to the top where you're um, usually actually refining them right there on the spot uh, into some sort of a portable method so it can be loaded into a, a vehicle. So the only thing that I see missing here is they've got the... Um, ability to move stuff around but I don't see the equipment to actually package the goods so that's the only thing I see missing is how are they packaging this up to to get it uh, sent out besides that they did a really good job on designing this to where it felt like you were actually at a quarry so the AI of the ranged mobs if you get too close to them and you hit them while you're standing too close to them, um, they'll usually try to run away. And it's a good way to get a break in receiving damage if you're starting to get low on your health and you need a break. Um, it's a great way to kind of get a, a bit of a break and not uh, die. So walk up and um, check out the, uh, the AI there where it tries to put itself back at range. Some more AI here where you get two different uh, types of, of non-player character mobiles and uh, they're fighting. In this situation it's a wolf fighting with the satyr. So. And uh, I love to mess with my guild members and say things a little bit goofy sometimes. So if I ever am talking on TeamSpeak and talking with my guild you'll hear me call them uh, satire, satire and satire and all kinds of different words and if you ever hear that these are the guys I'm talking about the satyrs so just as a heads up so I um, I'm being very careful what I loot in this game because virtue is in and I think looting some things should be a hit on virtue even if it's not so I play the game like it's complete even though it's not um, and uh, one of the things I've decided is that any oppressive race that enslaves another one would be perfectly fine to steal from. So I personally find that the fawns that constantly cry out for help and will not attack me are nicer than those big meanies over there that keep oppressing them. So I have started looting all of those... Uh, kobold type oppressors the satyrs and the kobolds are all kind of side by side so also while I'm uh, kind of working my way over to the mines you can see I've moved to where and I'm going toward the right of the entrance um, and I'm working toward the mine entrance over here uh, you'll notice that I, I'm playing an unlocked deck but it's pretty different than most people's unlocked decks I think and that's because I'm working on leveling a specific skill um, if you haven't seen somebody make a deck video for leveling a skill uh, this will be a very curious thing for you to follow along with but there's a way you can make your deck to where it's the most beneficial to you and that's what I'll show you right here is now I'm gonna stack everything up and in stacking these things, I know exactly what I'm going to get um, after I start spamming my skill. So I can come through here now and as quick as I want, basically cast my one skill that I'm trying to level up. And I'll always get my replenishment to it when I'm ready to go because I have all of my other cards fully monopolized. As they unstack, you'll notice that I stop getting these cards. I'll keep stacking them over here one at a time. And then I will naturally be able to get my death touch back. So I sit here stacking with my mouse on the 
right side of my bar while killing with my keypad on the left side of my bar. Um, and I am raising up my death touch to GM it, so... Um, all the rest of my stuff is locked right now. Yeah, there are. Thanks for mentioning that, uh, for about the runic. Uh, you can turn the runic to English, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. But uh, there are options in there. I personally think it takes away from the game because we're supposed to be in another world. Uh, but there are options there for those who don't care about that and they just want to make the game easier to play. You can actually take that runic and change it over to English, uh, talking about the, the map exploration I was doing earlier. Um, sorry to not pay attention to chat. I was enjoying the new functionality of the over, uh, overland map, the Novia scene, um, I hadn't walked to this side of the world yet since they had done their last update, and I had already found two places that there was collision I didn't have to experience. So I'm not a huge fan of being forced to uh, kill so many different things that I usually wouldn't want to kill, but unfortunately with the way that you raise skills in this game, um, and it's it's just realistic, it's the best way they can do it to avoid having a bunch of AFK bots all over the place. Uh, you basically have to fight when you farm, and the farming uh, usually involves killing uh, mostly uh, non-advanced creatures that have very basic... Uh, functionality uh, and that is exceptionally visible in the way that they fight uh, they just there's not really a fight to them so when you get to this part where there's the kind of the hunting post you take a, a left hand turn here and I'll kill this patriarch real quick they're fun to kill they last just a little bit longer than the average animal so Now you see the size of that last one was a little bit bigger. That's their very visual notification that you missed. So if you get that on a death touch when you hit it, um, get closer to whatever you're fighting because you just missed. So And before people cry, OP, OP, it needs a nerf, uh, I'm out of focus in one fight. Uh, so realize that uh, this is not a sustainable build. Um, what I'm doing right now is not sustainable. It's something that you can do to kill some pretty easy mobs that are in the yellow range. You can kind of mindlessly sit there and kill them, so... Alright, now we're moving into the mines. This is the fun part. So I'll give you a couple of tips about the mines as we get in. First, the leashing is a lot different than it was last release and every single release before that if you've ever played against uh, a Shroud of the Avatar monster. Um, it is... Uh, we want you to get caught in a fight and we want you to stay in the fight. So as soon as you come in the mine, you'll see you're already getting attacked. Um, and you've got to start by fighting almost right away. And the uh, rest of the time that you're going to be in the mines, you're basically going to be faced with a fight around every corner, and things will spawn a little bit faster as well. So um, keep in mind that if you're going to come down here, you want to be about adventurer level 50. Uh, the chance to hit things that you're fighting increases um, when you're within 20 levels of that uh, enemy. So you want to make sure that you are appropriately leveled before you come in here. Um, I started in here under level 50, but I've also been playing the game for a while, and I didn't really care about dying too much. So uh, I ended up dying a couple of times to archers and getting mobbed uh, in the second floor room, which I'll show you here in just a bit. But um, it's, it's something that really just... It never bothered me. I'm not a min-maxer. I'm okay with a few deaths every so often. So, um, I don't max out my mining. Um, I talked about that uh, ability before to 
get experience while you're farming so you can't just deal with constant macroing that applies to crafting as well and with crafting if you don't go and harvest some stuff you're not going to get the experience to gain your skills as a producer so um one of the uh ways that i make sure i have enough experience is by locking all of my gathering skills So I have my mining locked at 62, my forestry is locked at 54, my fishing is locked at 68, my field dressings at 53, and my foraging is at 43. You can see everything's a little bit different, and it's based on the different areas where I was farming. I waited till I kicked up to about 89 or 87 percent, depending on what it was, and then I locked it. And as soon as I got to the point where 9 out of 10 times I can harvest it, that's where I locked it because I would rather get that experience pulled up and put that into one of my producer skills. Just that's the way I play. So now for the tips. Uh, you see some broken tracks in here. When you come into these mines, they are dark. Um, they are not friendly to people who don't have a light source enchant. I'm using equipment that's enchanted as a light source, so it makes it a lot easier to see. But for the sake of this Let's Play, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you come in. So you're in the mines, it's dark, you don't know where to go. Uh, one of the hardest things to deal with in these mines is keeping track of where you're supposed to go next. Uh, one of the things you can do is look for the lights on the uh, rafters. And there's one right there. Oh, turn it on. And every so often you get these little lights here. So that's how dark it is. It's completely pitch black. And to take a note, I've actually turned up my brightness. So this is after I have my brightness turned up about as far as it can go that's how dark it gets so if you don't have a light source uh, enchantment you'll want to be running a, a light spell uh, which I can show you that in just a moment as well but I'm gonna go ahead and put my light source uh, item back on If it's like the spots that I usually farm, this part's going to be a little bit harder. And uh, if it's got what I expect, I haven't been down here for the last patch. So there's a chance that, uh, that with this latest patch, they have made it a little easier, but I highly doubt it. Um, I'm probably going to be facing a couple of hardened mobs. Hardened mobs are bigger than large mobs, and they have more health. So I like to fully stack up, and then when I target, you can see they're hardened. I wait to get hit by an arrow and then I cast. Every time I get hit and take damage, that's when I cast. And the reason why I'm doing that is because of the interrupt. And I'll try to get them to interrupt me now by casting instantly. We'll see if I take enough damage. And I didn't. If you take enough damage when you are getting a cast bar, you can be interrupted. So you want to be very careful about the timing of when you cast. The easiest way to fight a hardened mage, if you're a spellcaster, is to wait to get hit and then initiate your cast. They have a draw time on their bows. With the draw time on their bows, you can usually execute your spell before they hit you with their next arrow. And sorry about the kids in the background there. Um, I am a dad, so one of the things you'll find with all my Let's Plays is there's going to be some sounds in the backgrounds. So when you... When you are in combat, your regeneration of your focus and your health is actually slower. Uh, one of the things I do to keep myself going faster is I will drop combat when I know I'm in a safe corner that I'm not going to get attacked, and I will let my health regenerate while I'm mining. And then I'll go back into combat when I'm headed to my next area where I think I'm going to fight. Additionally, I enhance my movement quite a bit. I've got 3% uh, speed on my boots. I've got the light armor passives to make me move faster. I put my sprint on, I put my dash on, and I double tap W. From this point, I'm going to run about as fast as I possibly can as an avatar across the tracks. Um, so if I follow these tracks all the way down, and as soon as they hit a dead wall, I go to the right, there's going to be a secret room that I'm going to go to. 
So you have to keep following these tracks. I know that goes a little bit quick the way I just cut this. And that was the Y that I had to go in one direction. And here comes the fight with at the end. As soon as you down these guys, you can break through a wall. And there was an interrupt, by the way, that I was talking about earlier. You can break through a wall. And um, by breaking through that wall, you'll open up an area that's just really, really good and rich in resources if you want to... Um, make a little gold or level your own uh, crafting abilities. Um, it's basically a room filled with a bunch of silver ore. So now that we're at the end, if you hit this, you'll go back to the very start of the mine. So don't accidentally hit that while you're fighting. Uh, if you're an um, excitable clicker, uh, you might hit it on accident. So just want to point that out. Uh, that is a trolley cart that will take you right back to the entrance. But this wall right here is one that you can break down. So if you've seen some people uh, stream this game and you're not sure why I'm glowing yellow, and they usually don't, um, a lot of people that play this game don't enchant their armor. Um, I actually wasn't planning on enchanting my armor until I accidentally forgot about the banana peel look and uh, enchanted myself. Um, people who want to have the best armor and gear are going to have it enchanted, period. Uh, the downside is, as soon as you enchant it, you start to look like you've got this banana juice all over you. So, this is the uh, power that is mostly unknown. Uh, the magic in uh, Novia is a, a lost art, and it's not fully understood, which is why there is a randomness to it. That's part of the lore of the game. A lot of people get really frustrated with that, but as they go through the storyline, they should figure out what's going on. But the um, the gist of it is, uh, you kind of know enough to dabble, but you don't know enough to get what you want every time. And um, one of the side effects that you get for enchanting stuff is it has lower durability, and it starts to glow yellow. You can also see some of those glowing shards that are just around. These are shards with uh, basically, basically some sort of a, a magical property to them. No, sorry, I don't. Uh, a tip that a lot of people say is not to loot the corpses because they'll come back slower. Um, in my experience, it's actually good information. But um, I mine through this stuff fast enough usually that I can stand to fight for a little bit. And I like getting a little bit of the experience as well. So the adventurer experience that is. So uh, I generally will actually... Uh, loot all of the corpses, get the extra little bit of gold, and then enjoy getting a little bit of uh, change of pace besides just swinging an axe over and over. 
So I'm going to cut this room uh, about one and a half times uh, before I'm pretty sure it'll get boring for you guys. If you have any questions, ask them. I'm watching Twitch chat right now. But um, essentially, there's a specific path that I run in this room. And by running this path in the way that I have, uh, I can get the nuances of the reflections based on having light enchantments to where I don't actually have to be fully paying attention to uh, fight this room. I can be on a phone call, be working on uh, my other screen, sending an email, whatever it may be. And since the average gamer I talk to is a working adult with a job, some of them work at home like I do, I figured this might be a, a nice path to show. Uh, basically, to put it all in your peripheral vision where you're looking at another monitor and still seeing it, it's got to be about this big, and it's got to be front and center. So I pull my monitor down at just an angle here, and I run across the walls at this angle, and I look for that reflective nature that happens when I come across ore. Uh, additionally, all of the crystals are going to be extraordinarily bright and reflective, so it's very easy to catch those at the same time. So while I'm coming across this wall, I'm going to turn around this corner and there's going to be another uh, earth elemental most of the time. So I usually will sit here while I'm mining um, and stack with my mouse and uh, utilize my higher stacks to kill stuff just a little bit faster if there are two. If there aren't two, then I'm stacking all my experience into that one spell that I have because I'm trying to level it as fast as I can. So you can see that I do stack in, in multiple methods. Um, I'm stacking with the mouse on the right-hand side, and I'm stacking with the keyboard on the left-hand side. This is just my play style. Everybody's a little bit different. You can do whatever you want. Whatever works for you is the best way to do it. But when I round this corner here, I can expect to be in a little bit of a fight. So let's see how quick we can drop this guy. Doing higher stacks of spells will actually net lower focus usage and higher damage output. Um, so if you noticed I took a break there from casting, it's because I wanted to restack up to four with my fire arrow before hitting it. Um, and that was so I would get just that little extra burst in damage on it. Uh, fire arrow's biggest benefit is actually the dot that comes after. Uh, if you run a higher stack, your dot will last longer and it'll actually burn a little bit higher. Well, that's a pretty big deal when you're talking about the dot increasing by usually one or two points of damage every tick. So if you can get it to start off a couple points higher, then it'll start doing meaningful damage exceptionally fast. This room is actually going to be easier than most of the rooms in the mine. Uh, there's going to be two more elementals over here, and as I path on this right-hand side, they're actually not going to take me head-on. They're going to kind of wrap around. Um, their pathing doesn't allow them to get right up the wall, and I'll show you why. These walls are not the easiest to get up. So when you start to walk across these uh, moats and you see where I'm jumping, this is why I'm going to do it one and a half times because I'm going to get stuck the first time. It's kind of a pain to try to get up this wall here. So they're just like uh, us. They have to path up things as well. Uh, the only difference is they can actually utilize a computer program to get the best path possible path, and we kind of have to figure it out. So if you drop off of an edge, look for an edge. Don't go directly at the uh, most uh, upfront and forefront location to climb because it's probably going to be a little bit too steep. My experience is the best places to climb are at the edges uh, or hey if there's a ladder go for the ladder <laughs> so um, anyway yeah the uh, the edges of things usually have a slope to them and you can walk right out like I did you can walk right out on that slope This one's going to walk even a farther path in the wrong direction. Uh, I have a feeling that after showing this on a video, they're probably going to change it. 
But as of right now, it walks all the way around before coming to fight you. So one of the things about getting strong is making sure you get a decent weapon. Um, I'm utilizing a couple of different weapons here, and it's important to note that uh, having a decent set of gear and getting yourself stacked up to where you do a little bit more damage comes with some huge benefits. Now, I've talked about gear before, but I'm just going to mention it again. Uh, I'm a caster. I'm a specific type of caster that... Um oh, my mic is super loud I believe you're saying I can turn that down for you I actually run the game audio really soft um, there are a couple of sound effects in the game I'll show you real quick you probably can barely hear the game at all but that's because of some of the sound effects that come so if I had the game turned up to a reasonable volume that would be a loud thundering crack that would make you want to punch a baby so um, I actually have my audio on my game turned way down and if I turn it up you'll hear that you know I'm a lot softer so I do that intentionally because I've just had too many times where somebody either intentionally or unintentionally decided to start throwing some raining sounds next to me and thunder cracks and lightning charges and discharges and I just got tired of wanting to punch babies like I said earlier so um, staying around this outside edge uh, this is basically the only place I'll come off this outside edge if I empty the entire room and it's not respawning fast enough I'll also get this pillar over here but there's always a large one here, and there's always one or two large ones on this pillar. So um, this is about the only place that I'll come off and uh, try to grab some other gems. But otherwise, my first couple times around, I'm usually ignoring anything that's not a large gem that's not on the outside. So the downward angle of the, of the camera also helps to alleviate the camera bob you get in the mind sometimes. Uh, I don't know if anybody else uh, finds little tiny quirky things irritating, but there are times when um, just the little things start to add up to be uh, frustration. And this is a pre-alpha game, so there are a lot of little things left to work on that just, it's not important while they're still trying to add framework. Um, I say pre-alpha, it's no release. Uh, they're calling it early access now instead of pre-alpha. But if you run your camera directly forward, there's a lot of times where you hit walls and clip and see through them and get your camera to bump in and out. And some people like that. I personally don't. So when I have this cut down look, I find that I bump into things a lot less. If you look directly down, you hit the ceiling all the time. So this cut down look, uh, not only does it give me the perfect angle to get the reflection of the wall that I want, but it also helps uh, alleviate the uh, constant bumping and irritation from the camera. And yeah, stairs. Huh. So there are a lot of stairs in this game. If you see Chad over there, uh, there are a lot of stairs in this game that uh, frustrate people. But if you don't have castle walls and you haven't messed with them before... Um, the most obnoxious thing I think I can say about stairs right now is that their $5,000 and $10,000 pledges come with these uh, wall sets that you can build like these castle walls around your property or in your town. You can also craft them with granite, which is basically the only use of granite. Uh, but uh, you can also craft them and there is a stair deco piece that you put at the end so you can climb on the walls but they made it just a little bit shorter so you go to run up the stairs and you can't get on the walls unless you jump so not only do you get to deal with the little bob on those stairs but they're also not functional stairs 
So they're more of a decoration, like, hey, uh, wish you had stairs. Uh, here's what they would look like when they're finally working. And I'm sure it's been reported. It's just one of those things that it's not a priority right now. There are so many other things that they're working on that uh, even I would rather they work on than that. But that's probably the most annoying stairs thing for me. Um, but they look good. I mean, they look they look awesome. <laughs> they just uh, they don't work. <laughs> you go to climb up them and you get stuck. Even though this game isn't complete, I actually still think it is better than anything else on market. In its incomplete state, where there are things that it has left to work on, um, if anybody watches this that has not uh, played the game yet and is interested in a new game, uh, I think this not just has the best potential, but is currently the best game on market for somebody that wants a fantasy multiplayer game. Um, it also has a single player aspect to it and there's a lot of fans of the Ultima series that are playing this for the single player side uh, Richard is working very closely with the people that are writing the story he gets the story outline he gets to write what the, the story is and then they type the words into the NPCs and code it all and um, fans of the old single player Ultima experience are going to really enjoy uh, going back to talking to NPCs again as opposed to giant question marks and exclamations where you click, 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 click and have no idea what you just agreed to. So um, you'll see that I'm getting this meticulous collection. If you're newer in the game, you might not know what that is. And I'm just going to point it out real quick. So Meticulous Collection is your highest tier ability in Gathering. And, uh, oh, it looks like I'm going to have a fight on my hands. Um, it's your highest tier ability with Gathering. And it gets you a chance to get your base uh, reagent a additional time while you're harvesting. So um, when you go to... Uh, gather a node, a lot of times you'll get more than one type of thing off of it. So uh, if you're getting ore, um, you, you are very rare to see all the extra stuff. If you're getting a skin or a tree, you frequently get the extra stuff. If you're getting a cotton node, you rarely get uh, But there is extra stuff to gain. This does not give additional duplications of the bonus gathered items. It only duplicates the base items. So in an ore node, it gives ore. In a cotton node, it gives cotton. You don't get more beetle carapaces. So keep that in mind when you're leveling it. But I like having the extra base stuff because I am a crafter, and base is what it's all about. Um, some people don't think it's worth leveling. So I just kind of point back to what the value is of the base resources right now. Based on my previous gaming experience, I think it's going to hold to be that raw resources are the most valuable items for another four to six months. So harvesting extras of these is just constantly saving me gold because I use 100% of this and then some. Um, so that's, that's a path around the room. You can see that I can farm it faster than stuff respawns. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, this is a pretty short Let's Play right now. I usually will try to do at least an hour and a half. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit shorter because the content I'm doing isn't that involving. And walking circles inside of a room is just not exciting for people to watch. So if you have any questions, I'll delay exiting. And you can ask your questions in um, Twitch chat there. And if you don't, then I'm probably going to be disconnecting the stream as soon as there aren't any more uh, questions to answer. So I'll give it a couple minutes to make sure that nobody t is typing anything. And besides that, I appreciate you guys watching.
Yeah, no problem. Thanks for watching. What's up, Sammy? That escalated quickly. CG4 Lives Matter. I believe that's actually trending in North America right now. User disconnected from your channel. See, that's why I like Meticulous Collection. Look at all this silver ore I'm about to get. This is just beautiful. That's out of one node. So that's the original harvest and that's all meticulous collection.
Mining is actually lower than meticulous collection. My meticulous collection I have at uh, like 75, I think. And then I have the uh, obsidian potion on to boost it um, another 10 points. Uh, I would say there's a good chance you could get yourself some beetle carapaces out there. I just don't think they're going to net you the same type of an income as they will in Novia. User disconnected from your channel. Uh, I highly doubt it. Everybody's looking for gold and silver. It is going to drop. It's it's too high right now, but it's not going to drop by much because you got to think of uh, what drives the market is how long it takes to get versus how long it takes to produce gold. And uh, the the people like me that actually know where to go for stuff, um, I have friends that tell me I don't. I'm not born with this knowledge. I just ask a lot of questions, but uh, sorry. Uh, the um, the reality is, is you can farm probably about uh, 4k gold per hour. So then you have to look at how many ingots uh, or or uh, there's four or to an ingot how many ingots can you make in an hour um, and that'll set the the value and price is uh, one to one hour ratio it probably will never drop underneath that because as soon as it drops underneath that people will just farm gold directly and then buy them and when it's above that then people will farm them instead of gold so um, I think there's going to be uh, a, a natural price limiting feature that will always make some of the m rarer items more expensive and you see how this is buried behind a secret door to get to a decent room for silver um, and as of right now this is one of two decent rooms in the game it's just it's probably always going to stay a little bit more expensive
Oh, no, the, log the market is totally illogical all the time, but there are logical people in the market that help control the uh, items when they sell too cheap. Um, we come and buy them and resell them at a proper price. And when they are too expensive, nobody buys them unless they're a sucker and then they're broke and they can't buy anything anyway. So uh, the market is actually self-managing to become more logical at all times as long as there is a logic-based player out there. He or she will naturally fix the issues of the market just by the way simple economics work. The Brokers of the World. I basically have... Uh, three different guildies that are always playing the market and uh, they're talking to me about different prices of things and it's hilarious to see even something uh, like a golden crown of the obsidian that is a real money purchase that is a very rare drop um, to get out of the game fluctuates so much I mean it, it fluctuates by 40% of its value from vendor to vendor um, and they actually sell with that fluctuation uh, there's just it it's it's very chaotic and I get that completely. So I, I've just got to ask, uh, do you guys know each other in real life or something? Because you look like you're having a conversation about your homework right now. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. You guys have a good one.
user joined your channel. Hello, user. Just as a heads up, I'm streaming right now. Who is this? Vooch. Vooch. What's up, Vooch? Vooch. How you doing? Showing off some Verdantis glory. Oh, man, I wish I was there. I need to get some of those rubies. Man, I got so many rubies, I don't know what to do with myself. I'm like, all rubied out. You're like Ruby Huxtable. Uh, I'm going to agree, but I have no idea what you're saying. That was a Cosby last, show, night I, last night I tried to get in Verdanis, and I just... All right, guys, looks like chat on uh, Twitch is either ending or taking a turn. So I'll go ahead and say have a good night, and I will be continuing to do more streams, and I always try to provide helpful information while streaming. Unless it's an event, then I'm just showing the event. Sometimes if I do somebody else's event, which is very rare, I will... Um, Voice over that event, and I will explain what's going on. Sorry. And that's why I have this marked mature, by the way. Are you sure about that? Because I used them last release, and they were right. In R32, I used them and they were right. For hardened leather? Uh, I think so. I know I did leather and supple leather. I think I did hardened leather as well. Yeah, I tried uh, all the recipes there for hardened leather last night, and none of them was. But the ones with uh, Caprician Boss are the ones that I was not able to make. With the hardened leather. Carapacian, maybe. Yeah, the Carapacian. Yeah. I'll check them out. Uh, see if somebody has an updated version or whatnot. But um, I'm updating all the ones I find. And I know there's a couple other people doing the same. So it probably won't be wrong until the correct recipe gets put up. I mean, once somebody has the discovered recipe, they'll go and update the wiki so the wiki is right. So if you check back every couple of days, somebody will probably be getting it updated soon. What recipe? Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to have to make a, um, a better set before I can go into the Bernanis by myself. I made uh, augmented leather with plus threes or fours, and uh, that wouldn't didn't let me survive. I used uh, augmented with no pluses. None of them were exceptional, and I farmed the place. I think knowing the corners and the turns might be what helps you the most. I literally just streamed how to get to the third room, and the path that I take in the third room, you can watch the whole video, and uh, it, it takes me about five minutes to get through the the process of going into the mine and walking down the mine and talking about what path to follow to get here the quickest and what you have to fight. That's cool. What is your build? Me? No, I know what you are. I was referring to Boots. Uh, currently it's augmented leather. No, he's saying what skills do you use? Is the blade, blade your primary weapon? Longsword, 
two, two long swords. Why aren't you in plate? Yeah, you should be in chain mail or plate mail if you're using two swords. Alright. We've got a couple of uh, blacksmiths in the guild that can hook you up really quick and easy. I'm logged in uh, Owl's Nest right now. I mean, uh, not logged in right now, but I logged out in there. So I'll probably get some ore and cop or uh, iron ore and copper ore. Go back and make me a set. Okay, I have two questions, um, realistically, on your build. Is there a specific... Oh, I thought I turned this off five minutes ago. I'll go ahead and turn this off, guys. Have a good one.